What's up everyone, John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here. Today, April 8th, Steve Jobs took the stage in Cupertino, California to announce iPhone OS 4.0 with a ton of new features. So let me go ahead and jump into everything he went over. If you see me look down, it's because I'm looking at some notes. This conference just ended. So he started off by talking about the iPad, naturally, since it just launched. So they'd sold 300,000 the first day and 450,000 up until today, which is a huge milestone. And that's even before the 3G model was released. Uh, said over 3.5 million apps were bought for the iPad and over 4 billion total apps, which is just incredible, especially if you consider maybe a 99 cent average price point. Apple's just printing money with this App Store model. Okay, so now on to OS 4.0. Over 1,500 new developer APIs, including uh, camera access, quick look access, in-app SMS, and calendar access. So developer APIs are fine, but what about the features the end user is going to get? Well, there are over 100 new features in OS 4.0, uh, and let's get to some of the smaller ones, and they'll go over sort of the larger ones afterwards. So you now have tap to focus video, so when you're recording video, Tap the screen, it'll start to focus just like it does on the 3GS. Uh, you now can customize the background on the home screen and the lock screen, uh, just like you can on the iPad. You now have access to Bluetooth keyboards, you can connect and type away. Uh, there's now a built-in spell check application that sort of worked its way into native apps uh, like there is on the iPad as well. And now you're going to get a five times digital zoom, uh, which is quite nice. The iPhones have been missing any sort of digital zoom built into the camera app. Uh, so that'll be a very welcome addition. So enough of the little features. Let's talk about the big ones. And uh, they started off by breaking it into seven big services and seven big features. So let's talk about the seven big services first. Uh, number one and the biggest, biggest thing that's found its way into OS 4.0 is multitasking. And this isn't just some sort of fancy app switching. This is actually true multitasking is finally coming to the iPhone platform. I hope you heard me correctly, finally multitasking. All you do, you double tap the home screen, it'll pull up an application launcher, you pick what you want, and it'll launch that application right in the background. They didn't say how many you could run in the background, uh, but Steve Jobs did flick through uh, more than six, so at least that is the limited number that you can run, and these truly run in the background. So you can have a ton of applications going at the same time, uh, which has a lot of other uses, as I'm going to talk about right now. So first, background audio. Uh, you can now, let's say, run Pandora in the background while you're browsing the web or doing something else. Or any other application that plays audio will now be able to be run in the background. Quite nice. Next, voice over IP in the background, which means you can now use Skype, which will work over 3G, run that in the background, and you can still receive regular calls, receive Skype calls, and... Um, receive Skype SMSs as well and regular uh, info and SMSs. So you'll have access to really everything right on your phone, which is really cool uh, to be able to run Skype in the background. It's something, a feature that I've really been looking forward to. So if you're access to uh, 3G or Wi-Fi, go ahead and make your Skype calls without any problem. Next is a uh, background location, which is a big one for me because I get lost going anywhere. Uh, I can now have my GPS applications running in the background. So if I'm navigating to uh, a restaurant and a phone call comes in, I'll be able to make the phone call and I'll still be able to hear it left turn in 10 feet. Or if I'm listening to music and I've got my iPod uh, playing, it'll still tell me left turn in 10 feet, uh, which is a really, really welcome feature. Uh, also, the background notification, background locations also can be used for uh, geolocation applications, uh, things like Looped. Uh, but if you want to opt out of those, you're going to have new privacy settings on your phone. So any application you have that asks for your location, you can turn it off so you don't have to broadcast to the world uh, that you're going to the bathroom, although some people like to do that. Uh, next, you've got push notifications. Um, nothing really fancy here. They're not coming off of Apple servers anymore, so a lot of other applications will have access to push notifications. Uh, also, you now get local notifications. So if you want ESPN, for example, to send you... Uh, sort of a message when your team wins or loses or at the quarter, uh, you can now do that. And uh, the last one, and sort of pretty cool, is task completion. So if you're uploading a picture to Flickr, or uploading a video to YouTube, uh, you can run that in the background and let that upload while you're doing something else. Previously, if you wanted to upload a video to YouTube, you had to actually leave your phone on 
and not do anything else. If it locked or you locked or went to an application, the upload would stop. Uh, that is no longer the case. You can go ahead and let it run in the background and do whatever else you'd like, uh, which is quite nice. Uh, they didn't say what a drain on battery this is going to be uh, for the end user, but at least it's going to be your choice. Uh, for how you use your phone and your battery. If you use a lot of applications running in the background, you know your battery life isn't going to be as good. I know that maybe you're gonna experience a processor slowdown. That's just the way it goes. But at least now the consumer has the choice to run applications in the background, uh, which I am certainly in favor of. All right, let's go ahead and move on to some of the big new features. Uh, the first really big new feature is folders, uh, which is a pretty cool new feature. Essentially, essentially what you do is you take an icon, you drag it till it starts doing its little jiggly dance and you drag it over another icon and that creates a folder. Now it'll do something called smart naming. If there are two games, it'll name the folder games or you can name it uh, whatever else you'd like. Simple folder application that turns sort of one icon into a stack of looking icons, uh, which makes it a lot easier to sort of manage everything that you're doing. Um, you from so before, you can only have 180 applications on your iPhone. Now you can have 2,160. So Apple's gonna be making a ton more money from folders. It seems like a feature they probably should have had a while ago, especially looking at that number. So from 180 applications to 2,160, that is crazy. Uh, the next feature, one that I really needed and liked was a unified inbox. Previously, if you wanted to use your iPhone or iPod Touch or iPad uh, to manage multiple uh, email accounts, you had to switch accounts. It was a huge pain in the butt. Now all those come into one account, and they also now come with threaded messaging if you'd like. You can turn that on or off. It sort of saves all your emails back and forth in a conversation. Uh, you also can now open attachment with any related application. So if you're on the iPad, for example, and you get a Word document, you can choose open that up in pages, or you can open it up in another related viewer. If you've got a special PDF viewer of choice, you can open it up in that application. You're not limited to what Apple tells you you have to do. You now have the choice, which sort of seems to be the theme uh, with OS 4.0. Uh, the next feature Apple uh, included was iBooks on the iPhone or iPod Touch. whoop de doo if you want to read the books. It will wirelessly sync up, though, with your iPhone and your iPad or whatever other device you're using iBooks with, uh, sort of like Kindle's um, Whisper Sync. Uh, the other new features added were some developer features, nothing terribly exciting right there. You can now have more than one Exchange account, which is kind of nice. Uh, they're using Exchange Server 2010 and uh, new VPN options. But one of the another cool new features they're sort of previewing right now is called Game Center. Uh, think of it like Xbox Live or PlayStation Network for your iPhone, iPod Touch, or iPad. Uh, you're going to have achievements, leaderboards, uh, game matchups. Uh, which is really cool. The the i uh, devices have a ton of games out there. Now you sort of have a platform where you can compete with friends, see how you're doing against each other, set up matches, um, be able to get your sort of online play on. If I were Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony, I would be very worried. Uh, while the quality of the games and the length of the games and the graphics really don't compare to portable and uh, dedicated home consoles, the fact that there are so many games, these devices are in so many people's hands, and the games are less expensive, make it a very viable alternative. I know personally I took a long flight overseas, I thought about maybe picking up a PSP or a DS Lite, but I just downloaded games for uh, my iPhone instead, it just was a lot easier, it was more expensive, and I was able to entertain myself for a 12 hour flight, and I assume that I'm not the only one. So the next sort of feature, if you want to call it, that Apple launched, really to nobody's surprise, uh, there's a new feature called iAd, and it's a new advertising network that they are launching with application developers. Uh, previously, if you wanted to put an ad in your application, it was pretty much a static banner. You clicked it, it took you to the advertiser's web page, and that was uh, the extent of it. A lot of people and a lot of developers want to keep their applications free and sort of subsidize their work with ads. Well, Apple's new ad network, which is going to give a 60-40 split, uh, 60 going to developers, 40 to Apple, uh, really gives you just a completely immersive uh, advertising environment. Uh, Steve Jobs said it evokes emotion and interactivity. Essentially what it lets you do is create full apps within the advertisement. So he showed an advertisement for Toy Story. Uh, if you click on it, it launches sort of almost a new application. It lets you play Toy Story games, download Toy Story videos, uh, watch Toy Story videos, and uh, do all kinds of sort of mini games uh, within it. So the ad now stays within the application, it's sort of up to um, developers to create uh, applications that better use these ads 
uh, and Apple is claiming they're going to serve really fantastic interactive ads to the developers so they can get their data, their applications ready to be used with this new service within an afternoon. So I don't know how this is going to affect the end user, but it's going to be really annoying or it's going to be some welcome user features. Um, but I guess, you know, we'll have to wait and see on that. So when is this coming? That is a big question in everybody's mind. Uh, previews of it will be released today to developers. Uh, it will be coming this summer to iPhone 3GS and third generation iPod Touch users, to second generation iPod Touch users and iPhone 3G and previous generation iPhone users. Uh, you will get access this summer as well, but you will not get access to some key features uh, like multitasking, for example. The rest of the features that will be omitted uh, haven't been released yet. Uh, multitasking is certainly very processor intensive. So you're not going to have access to that, unfortunately, on some of the older devices. Uh, sort of forcing an upgrade, I suppose. And if you have an iPad, uh, it's going to be coming in the fall. No word whether or not it was going to cost money or not, but I would assume Apple's previous models uh, will hold true here. So guys, the question remains, are you excited about iPhone OS 4.0? It seems like a lot of the um, things people have been saying negatively about the iPhone have sort of been slashed one by one, uh, me included. Uh, multitasking has been taken care of. Uh, background images have been taken care of. I uh, would have liked to have seen better notifications. Uh, we still didn't see that. And I would have liked to have seen sort of a redesigned lock screen and home screen. Really didn't see that uh, with the exception of uh, folders. But finally, multitasking makes it a much more viable option, uh, I think, for power users. So are you excited? Not excited? Can you not wait to get your hands on this? Or do you really not care to go pick up an Android device anyway? Uh, really curious to hear what you guys have to say. Anyway, I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo, and for the rest of your iPhone OS 4.0 news, uh, be sure to check out technobuffalo.com for a ton more coverage. Anyway, I'm John Rettinger, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.